Hey guys, Dan here, aka Wolf, joining you with another Red Dead Redemption 2 Quick Start Power Play, designed to give you an advantage in the early stages of your journey. This time we'll be showing you a comprehensive beginner's guide in the form of things we wish we had known when we started playing. Feel free to check the description below if you want to navigate to different sections of the guide. The first thing we'll be going over is save slots and HUD manipulation. While an autosave is always running, actually using the game's old school save slots is a highly recommended feature that can save you a lot of frustration when things don't go your way. We are constantly saving the game before we go anywhere or start any mission. Simply select story, then save game and pick a slot. For the radar, you have several options at your disposal. Simply hold down on the d-pad and select the type of radar that fits your style of play. From a compass only, an expanded radar, the normal one, or turning it off for a more immersive experience. If you would like your health, stamina, and dead eye cores to always be visible, you can change them from dynamic to static by going to settings, display, then besides status icons, set them to static. Additionally, tapping down on the d-pad is a great way to get a lot of information quickly, from your location and the time of day to where you are on the honor scale, to how much money you have, as well as any mission objectives if you happen to be in the middle of a mission when you tap down. Tapping down and then immediately tapping to the left on your d-pad will bring up your log, but more importantly, hit R1 to see Arthur's challenges and where you are at. Completing challenges will level Arthur's stamina and unlock items and equipment for you at the Trapper. While you are playing, holding left on the d-pad will open Arthur's journal, which is a great way to delve into more lore and secrets regarding the gang and Arthur's thoughts about everything that is going on. In our next section, we're going to cover the saddle, a complex piece of equipment that is critical to mastering Arthur's experience. For starters, the saddle can store a total of three animal carcasses and a limitless number of medium pelts. One small carcass can be attached to either side of Arthur's saddle, and one large carcass, one bound human, or one giant animal pelt can be stored on the back. Even if you have a large pelt or carcass on the back, you can still stow medium-sized pelts beneath it. In addition, when donating large carcasses and pelts or selling them to a vendor, you do not need to take them off your horse. As long as your horse is close by, the carcass or pelt will show up in your menu. Thank you, Arthur. Arthur can take two long guns on his back, but the rest of his weapons are always stored on the horse. If returning to your horse after sleeping, camping, and certain story situations, you'll have to get yourself accustomed to cycling through your long weapons and your two saddle slots before dismounting to make sure Arthur has the weapons you want. Additionally, there are many other things you can do while still in the saddle, such as feeding your horse and brushing your horse, two very common actions, whereas the game originally teaches you to do these things while dismounted. When trying to set up camp from Arthur, person, you will often get the error that there is too much activity in the area. Use the camp from the saddle to override this error. And lastly, if you lose your hat, you can always reclaim it from the saddle. You can have up to two additional horses following you provided that you achieve bonding level one, which is what happens when you break a wild horse or get a new horse to trust you. The horse with your saddle will be considered your main horse, but the two additional horses will also respond to whistles. This is great when going on big hunting trips as you can store carcasses on all three horses. We also advise keeping at least one vial of horse reviver on you, which you can purchase at any stables. While horses don't die often in the game, when they do, you will want to make sure you have one hand. With the horse reviver, your horse can come back from just about anything, except for a massive explosion. I don't think he's coming back from that one. In our final beginner's notes on horses, make sure you purchase some high quality stirrups at the stables to increase your horse's speed. Also, remember to tether your horse every chance you get, which will help you increase your bonding with your horse. In addition to hitching posts, you can also tether your horse to trees. Stay here, girl. Next, we will cover a few little known tidbits about Arthur's wardrobe so you can look your best in the Wild West. Starting in Chapter 2, you'll get access to Arthur's clothing chest at his wagon. When reviewing his clothing, make sure you scroll down all the way so you can review all of his clothing and equipment. By hitting the square button, you can modify the collar of his shirts to be open or closed, and you can choose whether his pants are tucked into his boots. While there are several pre-made outfits, you can save several custom ones that you make yourself. You can store two outfits on your horse, and you want to make sure that one of them is suitable for cold weather. We recommend the Winter Gunslinger as your cold weather backup. Don't forget that you can change out Arthur's equipment as well, from his gun belts to his bandoliers, even his holsters. Additionally, you can visit the Trapper to craft additional hats and other items once you have sold the Trapper the required animal parts. Anything you sell to him is saved ingredients 
ingredients for things you can craft with him later. While you can pick up any hat laying on the ground, if you see a hat flashing white, this means that it's special. Picking it up will permanently add it to your wardrobe. Additionally, special hats are always available on your horse. If you want to increase the rate of Arthur's hair and beard growth, simply purchase hair tonics at the general store. I recommend chugging three of them. If you prefer your Arthur baby-faced, he can shave himself at the wagon. Later on in the story, you will unlock the ability to get an extra clean shave at the barber, which is a closer shave than Arthur can get himself. Next, we're going to talk about some basic things about weapons and ammunition that you need to know up front. First, you cannot lose weapons in this game, so when you see an option to swap a weapon lying on the ground for the one you're holding, know that anything you drop will be available back at your saddle. If you see a golden gun icon on your map, this means that there is a new weapon you should pick up because you do not have it. Even though the icon is a gun, rare knives have the same icon. The gunsmith is a great place where you should upgrade all of your weapons. In addition to making them look pretty, you can upgrade their stats as well by improving their rifling and throwing scopes on them. Don't forget to give your knife that special touch. For ammunition, you can craft split point ammo and camp by using your knife to cut an X on the tip of standard ammo. However, we recommend buying boxes of express ammo at the gunsmith. Don't forget to pick up a varmint rifle while you're there. You can damage pelts and decrease the yield if you don't employ the right weapon, so you'll want to make sure you have a varmint rifle for birds and small game. We also recommend purchasing a bandolier and a gun belt from the gunsmith as soon as you can, which will increase your ammo capacity and reduce the rate at which weapons degrade. Make sure to all Always keep gun oil on you so that you can clean your weapons by hitting R3 to make sure that they're performing at top potential. For crafting the different kinds of arrows, you'll want to hunt birds. Birds drop two different kinds of feathers, their own species feathers and flight feathers, provided they are flying species of bird. If you want to start out with a bunch of free powerful pistols, including a golden Mauser, we highly recommend that you start the Stranger Mission, the Noblest of Men and a Woman, which you can find in the Eastern Saloon in Valentine. Next, we're going to cover some important things things related to committing crimes so you can be prepared and take the appropriate action. First and foremost, if you're about to go on a crime spree, it's best to cover your face to hide Arthur's identity and avoid a potential bounty. You can do this with a bandana, or you can purchase an assortment of masks from the fence that do a much better job of hiding his identity while making him look creepy in the process. It's also a good idea to keep an alternate set of clothes if you're going to make a habit of being a bandit, to keep the townsfolk from recognizing your clothing later on. When you do commit crimes, you'll have to deal with witnesses in one of two ways. They will appear on your radar as red eyes. You can either neutralize them the old-fashioned way or try to threaten them to let them live and keep your honor. If you do get recognized or commit a crime while unmasked, you will acquire a bounty. Once things have calmed down, you can always head to a post office to pay off your bounty to stop law enforcement and bounty hunters from looking for you. Sometimes the law will be alerted after a huge shootout with an enemy gang, and you may still have a bunch of bodies that you want to loot. Simply avoid the law and make a camp nearby. Sleep for a short period of time, then return to the site of the shootout to loot the bodies stress-free. You can also loot the saddlebags of enemy horses. They'll be careful because they'll kick ya. In addition to masks, you can purchase recipe pamphlets from the fence that will teach you how to craft special ammo and weaponry. Make sure you inspect the pamphlet to learn the recipe after purchasing it, as simply buying it will not teach you the recipe. Now we're going to cover a few things you need to know about the map and travel. You can make temporary waypoints by clicking X anywhere on the map. You can set up to 12 permanent markers by pushing in on the left analog stick. After setting a waypoint and beginning to travel in that direction, you can activate the cinematic camera by pressing and holding the large touchpad. This will allow you to travel hands-free, provided that you hit X a few times first to get your horse going. While this usually works fine without any problems, be careful, because occasionally, disaster can strike. Oh. Another for fast travel, you can take the stagecoach to any place you have discovered for a small fee. If the stagecoach is not there, simply approach the stagecoach sign and interact with it. Don't worry if the stagecoach icon appears to be locked because it will always look like this if you're mounted on your horse. You explorers should be advised because you will not be able to travel freely to West Elizabeth or New Austin until the epilogue. This is by design. Aside from one story quest early on to meet Javier Escuela near Blackwater, any attempts to cross West Elizabeth will result in law enforcement and bounty hunter spawns until you are dead or turned back. 
Next, we're going to show you some important aspects of the Vanderlyn Gang's campsite and things you should be aware of up front. Early in Chapter 2, you will unlock the ability to donate funds to the camp and access the ledger to purchase upgrades for the camp to make life easier. Please note that there is no achievement for purchasing all of the camp upgrades, so we're only going to cover the upgrades that are important to your gaming experience. If you want to be able to fast travel from the camp to places you have discovered, you will need to upgrade Dutch's wagon first, which will then allow you to upgrade Arthur's wagon. Upgrading Arthur's Wagon will give you access to a large map that you can interact with for one-way fast travel. Next, you should get the leatherworking tools for Pearson so that you can begin crafting satchels for Arthur. Getting all of the satchels is essential to making your life easier and having plenty of room to store loot. You always get the bonus of every crafted satchel, regardless of the one Arthur is wearing. Lastly, you can do chores around camp to increase your honor and increase your deadeye. Just look for the black dots around camp on your radar. There are a total of six chores that can be done every day. Fetching the camp water, carrying two sacks of dry goods to Pearson's tent, carrying two hay bales to feed the gang horses, and lastly, chopping wood. Your honor will uptick each time and you will get plus five Deadeye for each chore. That's plus 30 Deadeye daily, making camp chores one of the best ways to level Arthur's Deadeye. It's not bad for leveling his honor, though be advised that you cannot max out his honor or dishonor until chapter 6. Lastly, we're going to review a few miscellaneous tips with you that will be helpful on your journey. People in the world will react differently to you if you're stinky, so it's generally a good idea to get a bath every now and then, which you can do at any hotel and some upscale saloons. If Arthur is really tired, you can even get some help cleaning him for the fair price of 50 cents. <laughs> I'll speak German, please. While foreign languages are not spoken often in the course of the game, if you want to know what they're saying when they are, simply go into Settings, Display, Subtitles, and then you can set them to Mission Only, to Always Be On, or turn them off as you see fit. Lastly, keep cooked food on you at all times. Food is a cheap way and an excellent way to heal your character and restore all of your cores. And with the land overflowing with wild game, there's just no reason not to have it on you. That wraps it up for today's Quick Start Power Play. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please throw Old Wolf a like. And if you're enjoying what we're doing here, you're always welcome to subscribe. If you want to know when our next guide comes out, click on that bell to enable notifications. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.